So next, new lemma. For every complex number z, there exists the complex number minus z, such that z plus minus z is the same as minus z plus z, which is 0. The number minus z is called the additive inverse. of the number z. All right, so proof. Clearly, the ordered pair negative x, negative y is, is a complex number for any choice of real numbers x and y. Let the complex number z be the ordered pair x, y. Then negative z is negative 1 times the ordered pair xy, which is the ordered pair negative x, negative y. And so z plus negative z is the sum of ordered pairs xy and negative x, negative y. This is the ordered pair x minus x y minus y, which is the ordered pair 0, 0. And this is the real number 0. Now, as multiplication, correction, as addition is commutative. We have that z plus negative z is equal to negative z plus z, which is the number 0. So notice that we can define subtraction. over the complex numbers. z sub 1 minus z sub 2 is defined to be the sum of z sub 1 and the additive inverse of z sub 2. That is, subtraction is defined for any pair of complex numbers because each complex number has an additive inverse. However, notice that subtraction is not commutative. All right, new definition. The modulus of a complex number C equals xy, the word pair xy, 
is the non-negative real number z using the symbol for absolute value which is the square root of x squared plus y squared so notice that the square of the modulus is the sum of squares of the real part of z and the imaginary part of z. All right? So new lemma. Let the complex numbers together, the ordered pair of complex numbers together with the symbol for multiplication be or denote the set. Of complex numbers. Together with the operation of multiplication. There exists the number one, which is the ordered pair zero, or correction one, zero, in the set of complex numbers, such that for every other complex number, z times one is the same as one times z, which is the number z. The number one which again is the ordered pair one zero is called the multiplicative identity of the complex numbers under multiplication. All right, so proof. Clearly, the number one, which again is the ordered pair one zero, is a complex number. Let the complex number z be the ordered pair x, y. Then, x sub one, or correction, z times one, is the sum, or correction, the product of ordered pairs x, y, and 1, 0. This is the ordered pair x times 1 minus y times 0. And y times 1 plus x times 0. And so this is the ordered pair x, y, which is the number z. So as multiplication, is commutative. We have that z times 1 is the same as 1 times z, which is the number z. All right? So new lemma. For every complex number z, there exists a number z superscript negative 1 in the set of complex numbers, such that z times z superscript negative 1 is the same as z superscript negative 1 times z, which is the number 1. The number z superscript negative 1 is called the multiplicative inverse
of the number z. So proof. Let the number z be the ordered pair x, y. And let the inverse be the ordered pair u, v. Then the product of z and z inverse is the product of two ordered pairs, x times uh, x and y and u and v. This product is x times u minus y times v. And the uh, imaginary part is y times u plus x times v. We need to show or we need to solve z times the inverse equals 1. And that gives us two, a system of two equations. So we have that x times u, or the ordered pair x u minus y v, and y u plus x v must be equal to the number 1, which in the complex plane is the ordered pair 1, 0. And so we have, again, uh, a system of equations. x times u minus y times v is the number 1. And y times u plus x times v is the number 0. From this second equation, we have that the number v is negative y over x times u. So if we substitute this into the first equation, we have that x times u minus y times negative y over x times u is the number 1. So we'll multiply through uh, by the number x, and we have x squared times u plus y squared times u is the number x. And so if we take, uh, take out, factor out the uh, number u, we have x squared plus y squared equals x, and so the number u is x over x squared plus y squared. And so the number v, again, is negative y over x times u. This is negative y over x times x over x squared plus y squared. And this gives us negative y over x squared plus y squared. And so the number z superscript minus 1, the inverse of z, is the ordered pair uv. And so this is the ordered pair x over x squared plus y squared negative y over x squared plus y squared. And very clearly, this is a complex number. And we have also demonstrated that z times z inverse is the number 1. Now, as multiplication is commutative, We have that z times z inverse is the same as z inverse times z, which is 1. All right? So notice that for any non-zero complex number z, the inverse of z is 1 over the square of the modulus of z times the ordered pair that has the real component of z and minus the imaginary part of z as the imaginary part of the inverse. Okay? So, notice 
that we can define division over the set of complex numbers. z sub 1 divided by z sub 2 is the product of z sub 1 with the multipl multiplicative inverse of z sub 2 where z sub 2 is not 0. That is division is defined for any pair of complex numbers for which the divisor is not zero since every non-zero complex number has a multiplicative inverse. However, notice that division is not commutative. All right? New definition. The complex conjugate of a complex number z equals xy is the complex number z bar the conjugate of z which is the ordered pair x minus y So notice that the conjugate of the complex number z is a reflection in the horizontal axis of the point representing the number z. So given the point x, y, which is our number z, if we reflect this uh, point in the horizontal axis, then we get the point x minus y, which is the conjugate of the uh, complex number z. So notice that if a complex number is equal to its conjugate, then it must appear on the horizontal axis. That is, it must be a purely real number. So we'll prove this in the next lemma. Let z be a complex number. Then the number z is equal to its conjugate if and only if the number z is real. Okay, so proof. Let z be the ordered pair xy. And suppose that the number z is equal to its conjugate. Then we have that the ordered pair xy is equal to the ordered pair x minus y. 
And so we have that y must be equal to negative y. This is true only when y is equal to 0. And so the number z is the ordered pair x0. That is, the imaginary uh, part of the complex number is 0. So this occurs on the horizontal line. And so the number z is real. Conversely, suppose that the complex number z is real. Then the complex number z has a non or can have a non-zero uh, real part, but must have a zero imaginary part. And so the conjugate of z is also the uh, ordered pair x0. And so the number z is equal to its conjugate.